In today's video, we'll be drawing the 8th wonder of the world. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Daggett, this is Daggett Designs, and in today's video, we will be drawing King Kong, the 8th wonder of the world. In last week's video, we drew Godzilla in a, a sort of a neo-traditional sort of style. Now from last week's video, I think most people said they preferred Godzilla over King Kong. But what I want you to do is stick around to the end of today's video and let me know if you prefer my Godzilla drawing or my King Kong drawing. With that having been said, let's get straight into today's drawing by going to the overhead. Alright guys, welcome back to the table. So to start this one off, we've got a piece of A4 sketch paper. It's actually A3 and I've folded it in half. And you guys already know why I do that. I have a mechanical pencil for sketching out our design and I've got an eraser in case we should need it. I've also got a little uh, spray paint uh, lid, but you could use any small circular item such as like a glass or a mug or something like that. That's just to trace out a nice circle. So to start this one off, I just want to start by mapping everything out so that we don't uh, get too lost in our design here. So I'm going to drop in a rough sort of oval shape for where I want our head to sit. It's gonna sit roughly here. And then just off to the left of this, I'm gonna pop our little uh, lid and trace that around to give us a circle like that. These are all very light lines to begin with. And I'm gonna be doing a, a big ax on this side. King Kong has a big ax in the new movie. It's really cool. So I'm gonna be dropping that in somewhere over here. So I just pop in like a triangle shape and then cut across the page where I want the handle to sort of sit. All right, so to get this one going, we're starting out with three uh, horizontal lines and they're gonna slightly stagger. So what we're gonna do basically is drop in a horizontal line like this. We're gonna go down and back slightly, putting in another horizontal line and then we're gonna go forward and down and putting in a third horizontal line. You want these to be equally spaced and of equal length roughly and then you want to join them up by their ends so we'll link this end to the middle here and to the top and then the same thing for the other side so you're just linking your oval shapes there now from here you're going to come up to the top of the shape that you just drew and come out from the center with these uh, curved lines that are just like almost like semicircles, they just come up and back down like that. They're just missing that bottom line. And then above this in the very center, you're gonna draw a circle. This will give you like the tip of your nose. And then two slightly smaller ovals to either side of this. You don't wanna do them too much. Smaller gorillas have really big nostrils. Uh, on the inside of these, you can do two smaller ovals that will be the actual nostril holes. And then just behind this uh, nose that we've done, I like to just put in a couple of couple more of these curved areas of like bunched up skin and you'll see what that looks like later on. Now from the outside of our first nostril on the right here, I'm going to bring a line out and down towards the back here. Might double up on that a little bit and that'll give us like a bit of a cheek to work with. And just above that, you're gonna drop in a circle for one of your eyes. Nice big circle like that. And you come to the other side of the nose and drop in uh, the cir another circle the exact same size and that will give you the placement uh, for where you're gonna to wanna to put your eyes. Now from here, what you wanna do is put in some jelly bean shapes just above the eyes. They're gonna be upside down jelly bean shapes. So just coming down curving around and curving back around. So like jelly bean or maybe like peanut shapes that just wrap around the eyes. And you wanna do that on both sides. And the one on the left will probably be slightly shorter because we're seeing a little bit less of it as it wraps around the side of our face there. Okay, from here coming up above your jelly bean shapes, you're gonna put in a couple of really long W curves that sort of span from one jelly bean to the other. Well, I guess they're more like M curves because they're curving down, but you're doing these long curves that dip in the center. And then for the very last one, you're just doing a little dome or a little 
uh, just a straight curve over the top like that. Now, to start roughing in some of the shapes for our mouth, you wanna go ahead and take an eraser and just erase all of your corners. Now, erasing it's not completely necessary. You can just draw over the top. I'm just doing this for clarity's sake. And then you wanna round off all of your corners. So I've just erased them so that I can round them off. And this will give us a, a good rough shape for our mouth really. Okay, from here we're gonna put in the lines for where the fur will sit and then we can go ahead and start adding in some details. So just coming along the outside shape of our uh, face here, coming down the side of the mouth, following the shape around and then getting a little bit wider around the chin and curving up towards the back of our face here. I'll drop in a second little layer of fur behind that. And then just behind the cheek area that we did here, I'll drop in another curve like this. And that'll give us another layer of fur on the face. Behind all of this, I wanna have a bigger layer that starts closer to the top of the head. Comes all the way out and around like this. And behind this layer, we can squeeze our ear in. So just behind the eye up here, I'm gonna put in Again, like a jelly bean or a peanut shape like this. You want to make it quite large. And then just double up on that shape on the inside for the ear. For the top area of the head, I'm basically going to come from the outside of our M shapes here. Come up and back slightly. And bring that curve around to the back of the ear, behind the ear there. And on the front of the face, you're just gonna come out to the outside of the eye there and drop a line down into the face like that. So starting off with our mouth, I wanna curve the front of our mouth a little bit more like this, just to give it a little bit more of a rounded shape. And I'll start by putting in a big peak like this, a big curved peak like that for one of our teeth. And then I'm just gonna drop in one, two, three, four little rectangle shapes, and then another curved peak on the other side. So that gives you two large teeth and four smaller teeth in between. And then behind this tooth here, I'm gonna drop in a few more rectangles or squares, just going back down into the back of the mouth. From here, I'll come down to the front of our mouth and I'll do a very similar thing by adding in a large tooth to one side and then adding in the little rectangles in between to give us the small teeth and then another large tooth on the outer edge of our mouth. And of course you can have those teeth going back into the mouth as well. To add in our tongue, I'm gonna to add the tip of our tongue by adding a little curved line that comes up from these bottom teeth and back down like this. And you can add a little center vein to that and then from the back of the mouth, I'll draw one curve that comes forward and down, and behind that, another one that comes forward and down. And that will give us our tongue on the inside of the mouth there. I like to add a bit of a lip to the bottom of the mouth here. So I usually just bring a little W curve shape to the bottom lip here, like this. And then I'll come to the outside of that and just trace around it with a similar looking line. For the nose shapes, basically what we're gonna do is start with the nostrils. Bring a solid curve around the outside of both nostrils from our top lip, like this. Trace in your little oval shapes on the inside of that to give you your little nostril holes. And then follow your top circle around and just don't quite connect it like that. Just leave it sort of trailing off. And then the two lines above that, the smaller curve lines, you can pretty much solidly trace those upward. And then I'll drop in, following our jelly bean shape, the curve around the front, and that's gonna come up and over our eye. And then from just underneath this, you can come back towards the back there. Drop in your circle or the remaining parts of your circle for the eye. And then on the inside of this, I like to just put two smaller circles so that we have basically three rings from the outside. 
from the outside of our eyebrow, we want to connect it back up. So I'm going to come out and do these little overlapping lines that join it back in like that. So basically what you're doing is this and overlapping like that, that gives it like a fur texture. Now, once you've darkened up all the areas of your face there, that's pretty much it for adding the detail. From here, you're just gonna do fur texture. So we're gonna do this in a pretty specific way and I'm gonna turn our page to make things a little easier. Now, essentially what you're gonna do is put your pen down or your pencil down and flick and then put it next to itself and flick. And you're gonna maintain a similar angle or a slight curvature to your angle so that it wraps around. So I'm gonna take this curve for our example, which is the curve just around our cheek there. I'll start with a little line like that. And I'm gonna follow that up and around. Slightly rotating my page every now and then to keep the angle consistent. But you're gonna follow that up and around. If all of the points of your individual strands here were to extend and touch, they should all meet at a central point. So it's almost like a bike spokes on a bike wheel. They should all come out from the center. So that's why they're all on a very slight angle towards a central point, but they're all very short. And you're gonna do that basically for all areas at first. So I'll take this curve down here and basically just do the same little strokes up and around like that okay so basically you're going to repeat that little pattern of fur texture for all the areas of fur around the face okay once you've finished all of your fur texture the traditional gorilla head is pretty much done like that's how you draw a traditional style gorilla head so if that's all you're drawing you can stop here but we're going to go ahead and make this into more of a uh, king kong design especially in regards to the recent film that came out which was godzilla vs king kong that's why i'm doing this little series um, but what we're going to be doing is adding his axe so just coming into that little line that we drew behind his head so it comes down like that the handle of the axe is made out of a bone i think it's like a big femur bone or something like that but basically i'm going to add uh, two little ball areas to the end here that will be like our socket joint and then add some thickness to our bone shape like this and then on the other side here we're going to be putting in one of Godzilla's uh, spikes one of the big spines that's on his back in the film they had a really cool idea of making an axe that King Kong could use and this axe was actually made out of one of Godzilla's uh, spines. Now the idea of it is that it had the same powers that uh, Godzilla had, which was like that uh, atomic beam juice, <laughs> I don't know what you'd call it, the atomic energy. And so it could be powered by his atomic beam and it would make it more powerful. So you're basically gonna draw him one of his spines. If you don't know how to draw them, Go back to last week's video. I'll leave a link in the description down below and that will detail out how to draw those spines. For the actual bone shape itself, we're basically gonna come in, follow around one of our circles and just add a bit of texture on your way around. Don't make everything super smooth and circular. I like to add a little dip and then from the other side, a slightly smaller little curve. And then down the other end of it, we're pretty much coming straight up and curving around the end and coming back. And then I'm gonna add some handle wrap. So the way we're gonna do that, or basically how it's uh, secured to the uh, spike here, I'm just gonna come across it with some hor uh, diagonal lines, I should say. And I'll do these in sort of a crisscross fashion. And this will make it look like it's tied around the uh, handle for the axe there. Okay, last thing to do before we transfer this one to watercolor paper is our little circle up in the corner, which is meant to be that red sun, just to sort of tie things together and tie the two designs together, the two different pieces of flash. Uh, I actually think the, uh, the cap from my spray can will be too small. So I'm just gonna take a slightly bigger circular object. I've got this uh, masking tape here. 
and we're just going to trace around that to give us our circle just like that and that circle is going to be solid red so that it matches up with the one that we did in last week's video so I'm going to go ahead and transfer this over to some watercolor paper so that we're ready for painting and I'll see you guys in the next part All right, I've gone ahead and transferred our image over to some watercolor paper. So using uh, pigment liners, I used a 1.2 for the majority of our line work here, a 0.5 for some of the smaller lines in the eyes there, and a couple of lines in our handle. And I used a brush marker to do the large uh, sort of spine there because we can get that nice texturing just by varying the pressure of our nib. And then for this big circle, I used a red uh, fine liner as well. So to start painting this one, I've got a few things here. I've got uh, Liquitex acrylic inks, okay? Uh, these are the inks that I use when I'm painting Tattoo Flash. If you'd like to get some, I'll leave a link in the description down below. That is an affiliate link, so it helps out the channel and is much appreciated. I've also got a couple of brushes. I've got an inking brush and a blending brush. These are Taclon synthetic brushes and a number five and a number six. And then I've also got a glass of water for washing the brushes out. Now I've preloaded my palette here. So I've got carbon black to do our black shading. I've got a brown, which I made by mixing about five drops of our yellow orange azo with a drop of darkzazine purple. I've got phthalo blue, just plain phthalo blue. I have a couple of drops of raw ermba, transparent raw ermba. This is pyrol red. And then I've got plain yellow orange azo, or as I like to call it, golden yellow. Okay, so as always, we're starting with our black shading for this one. And when you're doing any of these traditional designs that have this sort of fur texture on them, so uh, gorillas will have it, wolves have it sometimes, and occasionally you'll see it on other characters as well. Uh, this is the way I like to do my black shading for these. So I'll give you an example. I'm going to spin the page around, and we're going to work on this little uh, bunch of fur here. So we're gonna start by going into our carbon black solid and loading our brush up nicely. And then we're gonna come down to about, I would say about halfway through our hairs. You're gonna to have to play around with it a little bit and depends how you want it to look, but I'd come to about halfway down our hairs and basically add in a streak of black like this. And then you can feather that out and shade it towards your open space. Then what I do is I turn my page and just feather out the other edge going into the hairs. Now you don't want that edge to come too far into the hairs. You actually just want to feather it to soften the edge and make it look a little less harsh. So I don't like to do that side first. I like to do the other side first. Let the outside ring dry a little bit before softening that edge. Now you're essentially gonna repeat that technique for all little tufts and uh, areas of fur there. So we'll take this really small one for example. You're just gonna come in with a little bit of black about halfway up your hairs. And then using your blending brush, you can blend that back towards your open area. And then I'll rotate the page and blend out towards the hairs, but only gently enough to soften that out to a gray. That's basically the technique you're gonna to use to do all of the large sort of areas of fur around the face. All right, now I've used the exact same technique to black shade all of those areas of fur. And so now we can start black shading a little bit in the actual details of the face. So I'm gonna start off by going into the back of the mouth here. So turning this guy around, going into the very back of the mouth with a little bit of carbon black and then taking the blending brush and blending that forward. You don't want to put too much black, it'll darken it up too much. So I just want a little bit in the very back of the mouth and we're going to be shading red straight over the top of that, of that black shading anyways. Uh, we're going to do a little bit at the very back of the tongue here. Again, just the smallest little amount of black at the very back of the tongue and blending that forward and out into the rest of our tongue there. From here, I think I'm gonna do a little bit behind the eyes. Seems like most of the shading is gonna come off this angle relatively easily. So just coming in 
beneath our eye here with a bit of that carbon black and shading it forward. And I'm gonna come in just behind the eyebrows here as well towards the center of where the nose starts with a bit of our black. And then just carefully blending that up and out. All right, once you've filled in those areas of black shading, we can start black shading for our little axe here. There's really not too much to do here. You're just gonna add a little bit of black towards your base end here. And I like to blend that back a little bit. And then I'll spin this guy around a little bit. Come in with a bit of black off the very, very end of it. Again, sort of just blend that forward. Uh, I'll come in with an area of black off the bottom of the top sort of portion of the handle here, closest to our face. Bit of black off there. And again, you're just blending that up and out. We're just getting a bit of water on our brush and blending it through to a gray. And you can do a slight little bit of black off the very tip of our handle as well. And blend that back. Now for the big spike, the Godzilla spike, Last time when we did this, we didn't use any black shading, I believe. Uh, but this time, because it's sort of a, a focal point on this one and not a small detail, I'm gonna come in off the very base of our spike here with some black shading like this. And I'm gonna blend that up through to gray like that. And then we're gonna start close to the handle for the next section up here. Starting close to the handle, blending that out and starting close to the handle near the bottom here as well. And again, blending that up and out. Later on, we'll layer the blue over the top of that black and the black that lies underneath it will add more contrast. All right, once you finish your black shading, you can wash out your inking brush. And we'll go ahead and start working with some colors now. So we're going to leave the red till last, like last time, because we've got a color in this big circle. There's no point brush, uh, washing your brush out more times than you need to. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with our brown. So our brown, which is yellow and dioxazine purple. We'll use our inking brush to go into that. And we'll do a bit of blending with that. So basically you're going to go to any areas of skin, like the ear. That's like exposed skin. I'm going to do that area brown and then coming towards the top. I'm just going to blend that through a little bit for a bit of a highlight at the top there. You're going to basically do that for areas uh, in and around the face just by adding brown to those areas and then you can blend the edges to soften them a little bit. Now a lot of traditional gorilla heads they do the skin tones as like a cool um, blue gray a cool tone blue gray and this is to give it that sort of silver silver look or that metallic sort of skin look but just depends how you want this to look I do like those blue gray sort of tones for gorilla skin when I'm doing a gorilla design but sometimes I'll change it up and use brown for the skin tones just depends how I'm feeling about the design that particular day or also depends on the subject matter that I'm putting it with. So depending on what's around it, I might utilize some different color tones. So just coming in with our brown here. And as you can see, I'm leaving a bit of a gap on top of the cheek as a place for a highlight. So just softening that edge, but leaving a strip of highlight across the top there. And coming in above the lips as well, doing the same thing, leaving a strip of highlight there blending it back into our fur and sort of softening up that top edge. So you're basically going to use brown to do the facial areas of skin uh, around the face there. And take your yellow orange azo and paint the large teeth on your gorilla yellow if you would like. This is what we did with the Godzilla. So trying to match things up and you know sort of have some consistency through the design. But also it's a good way to make this look more traditional as a lot of the time they did the big sort of canine teeth on these designs using our yellow. I'm also gonna use our yellow for the outer ring of our eyes. 
Okay, at this point, if we were just doing the gorilla head, I'd jump into our reds now. But because we're doing some other elements here, I'm gonna take some of our transparent roll urba now. And we're gonna go ahead and do the handle of our ax here with that. So just bringing it down and blending it through. This is gonna have a really similar color to the brown that we used in the face. It is slightly different. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit lighter of a color. It has a little less of a pigment to it, but it's gonna have quite a similar color. I'm not using too much of it either. I'm just using a little bit and then blending it up through to white. And I'm pretty much just applying it over the top of my black shading before blending it out. Once you've done this color, you can wash your brush out once again. And then you're gonna take your phthalo blue for doing that spike that the ax is made of. And you're basically going to do the same sort of shading by applying phthalo blue over the top of your areas of black, moving towards your areas that are gonna be lighter. And then with a blending brush and some water, just blending that up and through all the way to white like that and you're going to do that for all of the areas that you've used black shading on your little spikes for the handle wraps i decided to go back into my uh, yellow orange azo and just apply some of that to the handle wrap this probably wouldn't be my first choice of colors for that but it stands out nicely. I get to use the yellow a little bit more through the design and it just adds a little bit more contrast. Okay, from here, we're gonna start adding our red, but we're gonna start by adding it in a way that makes it look slightly pink. So we're gonna come in to do the inside of our nostrils by applying a little bit of red to the line of the nostril and then blending it forward with our blending brush so that it turns pink. This way it looks like the fleshy interior of our nostril there. And you're gonna do that for both sides. You're gonna come into the inside of your ear as well, from the bottommost area with a bit of your red, and then blend that up through to a pink towards the top. This will lighten it nicely. And for the eyes, I'm going to do very similar to what we did in our Godzilla design. I just like the way this looks with a lot of eye designs, but you just come around the outer edge with a bit of that red, and then you can blend it forward slightly to a pink like that. And then for the other eye, you just come in from the inside here with a bit of your red, and blend it forward. You'll take a little bit of red at the very top of your teeth here, just a very little bit at the top. Blend that forward and down. And that will give your teeth a little bit of gums. You can do that towards the bottom of your face as well, just coming into the bottom teeth here with a little bit of red. And just blending that on up. And then for the inside of your mouth, you're basically going to do, uh, you're gonna blend the red quite far across. So I'm gonna bring the red in from the back of the mouth here, all the way around to the teeth. I'm gonna bring that pretty far across the mouth, like this. And then as we reach that curved edge, we can just gently feather our red off We'll do that same technique for the tongue. So coming in with solid red over the top of your black and gray shading, following nearly up to your line there. And then just feathering that edge out to soften it, not really blending it all the way through. Now, before I get stuck into doing that circle, I wanna do a little bit of a glow just behind where the ax sort of intersects with the bottom jaw there. So just a little bit of red. And blending that out. And you wanna blend these glows out all the way to white when you do them. 
and a little bit to the other side there. Now, just like with our other design, I'm gonna go ahead and paint our large circle in solid red. And you'll need to do multiple passes, just like last time. If you do this in one go, you'll end up with patchy red. So you wanna go over it a couple of times to get that red nice and solid. So normally I'll take the smaller of my two brushes and go around the parameter of my circle and just making sure that it's nice and solid to the line. And then to fill the center, I'll usually come in with a larger brush and fill that in. So once I finished doing my little circle, I went ahead and applied my stamp. So guys, which one did you like better? Did you like the Godzilla design or did you prefer the King Kong design? They're pretty different in a couple of ways. This one's a little bit more Japanese uh, influence and a little bit more near traditional. This one's more American traditional style with a little bit of a Japanese influence, but you'll have to let me know which one is the winner for you. And also if you changed your mind, did you initially think that one would be better than the other and now you prefer the newer one? You'll let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, guys, that is it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.